Hello and welcome to the show today. I am your host, Lynn Demons, and this is Financial Confidence God's Way. Finances in a rut? Need a way out? Lynn Demons is here to help. She's your personal financial rebound coach. Being a wife, mother, and educator, she understands the importance of controlling your finances and building generational wealth. She is here to help you find money you didn't know you had and live life on your terms. Sounds too good to be true? Well, it is true and it's definitely a good thing. Lynn Demons of Demons Enterprise offers one-on-one coaching, group coaching, and radio podcasts entitled Financial Confidence God's Way on WYTV7. Christian Broadcasters Network. Lynn Demons of Demons Enterprise, your number one financial rebound coach. Today's topic is your credit score breakdown. Do you know enough about your credit to ensure that you are on the right track? Before we get started, let's go to our Bible for our guiding principle, which is Matthew 6 and 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. As we look at our money and talk about things that matter most, we also want to be thankful and pray over our finances. So if you'll bow with me today and commit this prayer to memory. It's sure to help you as you move forward in developing and becoming a kingdom builder. Lord, help us value the things in the world that are really valuable. That's our relationships with you, our lives, and our families. Help make us responsible stewards of your financial resources. Let us trust your holy word for the eternal glory of your son, Jesus. We pray. We thank you. I want to thank you so much for joining in the show today. Go get your pen and your paper because there is some invaluable information we'll be sharing for, with you. But before we get started talking about our credit score, it's a very timely conversation because we just had news of an Equifax data breach. <music> And looking at that Equifax data breach, I'm going to talk about several things to protect yourself. The news was shared with us that we have over 143 million, yes, 143 million American consumer whose sensitive personal information was exposed. Now, this breach happened mid-May through July, and those hackers were able to get in and get access to names, social security numbers, birth dates, addresses, and in some cases, your driver's license numbers. So this information, not only did they access information for those of us in the U.S., but they also grabbed some information from those of you in the U.K. and Canada. So it's very important for all of us to review our credit reports. And you can definitely take some steps to protect yourself. If you want to find out more information about this Equifax data breach, you can go to Equifax's site, www.equifaxsecurity2017.com, where they're giving you their uh, one-year free credit monitoring and some other services, but you have to enroll. I wouldn't stop there, though, if I were you, because I would consider freezing my credit. This will um, stop anyone who who wants to create another account in your name. But I do want you to keep in mind, this does not stop them from putting charges on anything that you currently own. So if you have credit cards that are open now, you need to also monitor that activity because an identity thief can continue to use that for those that are open. But you can freeze your credit so that new accounts are not created. If you don't want to put a credit freeze on your account, you can also uh, put a fraud alert on your files. So this way, anytime anyone's running uh, your credit, that alert will pop to the screen to have them to take some additional measures to protect you. And another thing that I would suggest or highly recommend to you is to file your taxes early. You want to file your taxes as soon as possible because these people or these hackers have your information and can potentially go in and submit your taxes on your behalf. And we want to get in front of all of that. So if you will also check out identitytheft.gov slash data breach, you can go there for more information. So in sharing that information about Equifax, today's topic is your credit score breakdown. 
And if you feel as though your credit score is some sort of mysterious secret, then you're not alone. A lot of people feel that same way because we typically, this information is not shared with us. So while there's a non-verifiable statistic as to how people feel, how many people feel like this. The fact is that the credit reporting agencies don't readily reveal your calcul- their calculation methods to you, right? They don't make it easy for you to see why um, you're at this particular number. And you may not need to know the exact formula, but it's smart. It's still smart to have an understanding of how they come up with your credit score. So you can do whatever possible, right, to maintain or improve your credit score. After all, if you don't know what goes into your credit score, there's no real way to do anything about it. That's just the honest truth. So in having a better idea of what elements go into determining this and how it's calculated, this allows you to have more control over your financial health, your financial stability, if you will. So keeping that in mind, I wanted to go over a breakdown of what the credit score really is. What is it made of? And these are the things that I would suggest that you write down or that you take note of or do some additional research so that you are informed. Number one, the most important part of the credit score is your history of making payments. And believe it or not, this counts for roughly 35% of your overall credit score. Now, if you have a spotless record of making payments on time, then this is good news for you, right? However, if you occasionally forget to pay a bill or you're routinely a few days late, then this could be bad news. So I say Um, Because of the different creditors and the different policies that they have on when they report a late payment to the credit agencies, you need to know what the threshold is. So it's best to pay all of your bills and loans on time. So do whatever you need to do to make sure that you're consistently paying those off. Put reminders on your phone. And I say this all the time. I have reminders on my phone. Every month that I need to pay, every bill that I need to pay off, what are their due dates? I put reminders on my phone. Or do something simple. Pay all of your bills at the beginning of the month, right? Have your funds set aside so that you are able to do that. First of the month comes, you're able to pay off all your bills. You don't have to worry about that month. However, if that if your funds are not set up that way, that's fine. Set it up in the best way that fits you. Use your phone. Take advantage of those smartphones. Set up notifications on your calendars, and you can alleviate a lot of the problem. The second thing, your blend of credit adds up to 10% of your score. So what do I mean by that, your blend? So you can have a mortgage, a car loan, credit cards, and maybe a store account like uh, JCPenney, Sears, whomever, right? You pay on, and this is a sign to the agencies that you're able to handle a variety of credit options. But you need to be sure that you're able to handle all of them. So as not paying on time on even one type can count against you. So yes, so now you're saying, okay, wait a minute, Lynn, you're speaking two different languages here because you say not to carry debt. And I do mean not to carry debt. But if your credit score is important to you and you want to use it to purchase large items, then this is key. You need to have a variety or a blend of different items that comprise your credit reports. The third thing, and this accounts for 15% of your credit score, it is how long you have had a credit history. So, of course, the better you've handled the credit over the years, the the better it will be for your score. But it's still better to have a more established credit record than a shorter one. So don't keep opening credit cards and then closing them out um, because that is not going to be the best hit, if you will, on your credit score. Trying to maintain those as long as possible. Some of the tricks that people use to um, 
help and save their credit is they'll take those credit cards and freeze them, right? Freeze it until the event that you actually need it. Yeah, that's a bit drastic, but if it works for you, use whatever strategy is going to help you to build the best financial health, if you will, that you would like to have. The the fourth thing I would say, um, this is second in weight to the payment history, is the total amount you owe. Okay, and this counts accounts for 30 percent of your credit score. So the total amount you owe is compared to your income in what's known as your debt to income ratio. So the lower, the better, the lower the debt you have in terms of the money you bring in is so much better. So try to aim for a total debt at 25 percent or less of your annual income, and this will help, you know, will have the best effect on your credit rating. And then number five, the other thing that impacts is new inquiries. Any new inquiry into your credits, those are a warning sign that you may be overextending yourself. And this accounts for 10% of your total score. The one exception is If you're the one looking at your credit report, that does not impact you. So as you can see, there's no real mystery when it comes to your credit score breakdown, but knowing how much weight is given to each portion of your score can help you decide where to first focus your efforts when when you start trying to improve your credit score. So now you have a true opportunity. We have this Equifax data breach that's going to allow us to go ahead and go in, check your credit report if you have not done so. Go ahead and check it to see where you are, what are some of those changes that you may need to make in order to ensure your financial health. I want to thank you so much for joining in the show, and we're going to take a quick break. Finances in a rut? Need a way out? Lynn Dimmons is here to help. She's your personal financial rebound coach. Being a wife, mother, and educator, she understands the importance of controlling your finances and building generational wealth. She is here to help you find money you didn't know you had and live life on your terms. Sounds too good to be true? Well, it is true and it's definitely a good thing. Lynn Dimmons of Dimmons Enterprise offers one-on-one coaching, group coaching, and radio podcast entitled Financial Confidence God's Way on WYTV7. Christian Broadcasters Network. Lynn Dimmons of Dimmons Enterprise, your number one financial rebound coach. And as we close out the show today, I definitely want to provide an opportunity for you to follow up with us at WYTV Christian Broadcasters. We're on Facebook at Financial Confidence God's Way. We definitely want to hear your story. Share your stories with us. Anything that has happened to you through the Equifax data breach or other data breaches or anything you've noticed with your credit score. If you follow these tips that were given about your credit score and you've seen some improvement, please share those stories with us over at Financial Confidence God's Way. We also want to invite you to join in to WYTV7 Christian Broadcasters Network to listen to our shows that are available each and every day. We thank you so much for tuning in and we'll see you on next week, Tuesday at 6 p.m.